All right, hey guys, OFD checking in here, and today we're finally going to be taking a look at the uh, Seiko SBEP001. This is known as a Seiko Digital Tuna. Um, obviously, it has that tuna can design with the shrouded uh, case on the watch, and there's a number of different variations of this model included. I think some limited edition models that are pretty tough to find out there. Uh, I think they're making a patty version, Pepsi version, all kinds of different variations on this watch. So something you're going to like if you're not particularly fond of this all black model. Now, I want to talk about a few things really quickly first to get them out of the way. And the very first thing I'm going to go through the specifications on this watch. It's a big watch. It comes in at 49 millimeters from side to side, not including the pushers on the watch, just over 49 lug to lug. So it's a very round watch as far as that goes, which most tunas are. You got 14.3 millimeters of thickness on this watch and you have a 22 millimeter lug opening. Now talking about the size of the watch, a lot of people that's going to turn you off immediately, but I want to remind you guys that a lot of the more popular G-Shock range of watches out there, the Range Man, the Golf Man, uh, they're big watches. They run uh, plus 50 millimeters. Um, same thing with the thickness, some are up to 16 millimeters of thickness. They do have great functionality, but they're very big watches, sometimes in um, bright colors and whatnot. So I don't think the size of this watch should necessarily turn you off, especially if you're into digital watches. So really great functionality on this watch. And I want to bring the uh, watch up here just a little bit closer so we can talk about a few of those characteristics. Now, the first thing I want to point out to you guys is that the bezel on the watch does turn. And I mentioned that because in the unboxing video of this watch, um, I the bezel was very stiff and I didn't think it turned. And I couldn't believe why you, you, you would have a bezel on a watch that didn't turn. It turns and it's very functional. I want to point out to you guys that as you can see just inside on the glass, or on the crystal, you have these in, uh, hash marks indicators for the minutes. Also on the inside of the dial here on the digital readout, you guys can see that you have minute markers that appear every minute there as this rolls over the seconds. You'll see a new hash mark appear there. So as easy as it is, you can just turn this to the current hash mark on the dial. And as they appear there at each and every minute, you can do your use your timer here on the bezel to keep track of time. So it's a very functional, useful uh, tool on this watch. Like I said, I don't, you know, I don't remember ever seeing a diver's watch in the past with an actual functioning um, diver style bezel on that. So pretty neat deal there on a digital watch. So um, other functions on this watch, there's quite a bit. So I'm going to go through them rather quickly because otherwise it'll eat up all the time for this video. So the mode button down here at the four o'clock will take you through the modes. Really quick before I do that, I want to show you that it is a dual time watch. Again, I'll bring it up a little closer. So you have your main time here in the main window, your day and your date up there at the top. Down here below, you have your um, second time zone or your world time zone. And I have that set for East Coast time. If you want to change that, simply push the button here and you can scroll through different time settings as you guys can see as we go through there. I'm sure it's got all of your, uh, you know, standard settings and maybe some of those in between ones that you would expect or want to have. So I leave it set for um, East Coast time. Go ahead and push that again. It'll take me back to my normal functioning mode. So that's how you can adjust that world time or your main time setting. Going through the mo modes, you do have chronographs on this watch. You have to dual chronographs on this watch besides the uh, bezel. So you can keep track of a whole lot of timing events on this watch. You can do split time on it. You can stop and start, clear it. Um, as you guys can see, when you do have it running, you get the little flashing running man up there. So if you do scroll through your different modes and you forget that you've got it running, um, you'll always know that you have your chronograph running because that little guy will be flashing over there. So getting back to that, I'll go ahead and stop it. We'll reset that. We'll go on to the next uh, option here. This is the recall for the channels. There's uh, two channels right now that have readings on them, or I guess you'd call it um, recordings. You can clear those as simply, and this is from the chronograph, so it'll keep track of the timing events you have in your chronograph. Um, I think if we hold this down, it will actually clear both of those. It's going to ask me if I want to clear them all. I just keep holding it. Now it's cleared all of the um, recorded information on the watch. Go ahead and scroll back through. You have a timer. You can set this for up to how many hours you want to time something. I just set for 25 minutes for some cooking I was doing the other day. This will take you to your, your alarm mode. You have three different alarm functions on the watch. You can set them all independently. It does have a nice loud alarm function on the watch. Works really well. 
Going here, you have your solar mode. This is giving you an indication as to how much solar level the watch is gaining. Uh, I think it also has to do with how much of a um, charge you have in the watch. Although on the main screen, it has that battery at the bottom and this shows fully charged. So this should let you know the solar level you're receiving on the watch. I mean, under these lights, these false lights here in this studio, I'm barely even getting one if I put it there. I think it goes up to 10. I had it in 10. Uh, in bright sunlight, that's where I actually charged the watch when I first got it. And then it'll take you back to the time mode. And yeah, like it showed you down there at the bottom, um, it's actually got that set there. So, or it lets you know that you've got a full battery there. So uh, go ahead and back it off a little bit. I want to show you guys also. So when you push this, like I said, you can change the uh, world time zones, push it again. Now, if you hold this one down, this is going to allow you to adjust your time settings. You can set, adjust your main time. That's for LAX, uh, Denver, depending on where you want to have it, China. So we'll go, or that was probably Chicago, actually. So we'll go back to the LAX because I like it set there. And we'll go ahead and show you that if we scroll through here, it takes us to the daylight savings time function. You can turn that on or off simply like that. Turn it off. Uh, seconds, it lets you know that you can adjust the seconds down here at the bottom. I'm not going to do it because the time is set perfectly on this watch, but you simply uh, reset it with that button there. Also for the minutes, also for the hour, you can adjust them plus or minus with these two buttons over here on the side. The day of the, uh, the day of the month, or the month, excuse me, the date, the year, the 12 or 24 hour, this is where you can adjust the contrast for this back uh, for the uh, display on the watch. So you can have it at a two. I've got it on the brightest contrast for the watch. You can turn it down to a one or all the way down to a zero. I like it at two because of this negative display. It makes it a little bit easier to read. Go into the power saving mode. This is a solar watch. I didn't mention that probably in the beginning. I probably should have, but uh, it's definitely a solar watch. So it lets you set the power save for... Um, depending on how long you want to have the watch in the dark before it goes into power saving mode. Tap. This tap function is for the light. And here in just a minute, I'll dim the lights and I'll show you the tap function. I'll actually show you that before I get the watch on my 7-inch wrist. But three different settings for this also. One being the highest. You go to zero, which is kind of a neutral, and then negative. And that has to do with how hard you tap the crystal of the watch to get the light function to work. I found that when I have it at one, you don't even have to tap the crystal of the watch. You can tap the side of the case and it actually lights the watch up. I'll show you that here in just a minute. So getting through the functions there, go ahead and push the adjust button. It's going to take us right back to our main time mode. So lots of functionality on this watch. Maybe not as much as some of the G-Shocks out there, but I'll tell you what, I think a lot of times those go way, way overboard. Um, even this watch has more uh, functionality that I'm gonna use. I've used the alarm, I've used the timer, I've used the, the bezel, which is a really neat uh, function for using at the gym if you don't wanna grow into, go into the chronograph modes. If you do like using a chronograph, split timing, anything like that, all of those functions are available on this watch. Let me go ahead and dim the lights and show you how the tap function for turning on the light works. All right, so you guys can tell it's dark. It's very difficult to read this negative display in the dark, but um, there's a tap function on this watch and you simply, there you go. You tap the screen and it lights it up. Now it's very limited as far as how far that's gonna, or how long it's gonna stay on and it's actually not adjustable. Now, there we go. You can tap the case of the watch pretty much anywhere and it's going to light up. I, I seem to be tapping it harder than I usually do. When it's on the wrist, when it's got something backing it, it tends to really um, light up pretty easily. So simple as tapping your watch. You can tap it on the side of the case a lot of the time on the glass and it's going to light it up. So that's how you actuate the light on the watch. It doesn't have an auto electric illumination or anything like that. Um, like you would have on a Casio, but it is a cool little function. Basically hit it and it's going to light the watch up. So let me go ahead and turn the lights back on and we'll go out with the uh, wrist shot on this watch since we already did the loom shot right here. So pretty cool. All right, so no doubt this is a big watch. It's big on the wrist, 49 millimeters, but 49 from lug to lug, keep it um, keep it fitting on the wrist. It's big, it's thick. You know, for a lot of people, this is going to be your style. I love wearing the watch. It's funny because... I know they came out with the Seiko Arnie just recently, the reissue of the Seiko Arnie. But it's funny, I felt like that the, if they made like Commando today with Arnold Schwarzenegger, he'd be wearing this watch. It's just tough looking, very rugged looking. It is a big watch, but because it's all composite material, it is super, super lightweight. I find myself when I'm wearing this watch actually forgetting that I'm wearing such a big watch till I look down at it. But 
very legible, works extremely well. The tap function for the light is a really cool function to have on the watch. You can see it work there. Um, I think it's a good buy. I think it's a great, great option over a G-Shock. I think if you're a Seiko fan, um, but you really want to have a G-Shock style watch, this might be an option for you guys. So, all right, guys, long time since I've done a 10 minute video, but had to be done. There's so much functionality in these watches and I'm sure I've missed something. If I did, leave it in the comments down below so I can uh, tackle that on the next one. I do want to do a follow-up video, though, like I said, guys, of taking the shroud off the watch and showing you what the watch looks like with the shroud off. It actually looks pretty cool. I thought it looked like a neat-looking watch with the shroud off. So we'll do that here down the road in the future, guys. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up down there at the bottom. And if you guys have not subscribed to the OFD channel yet, please do. Please do. Thanks, guys.